In this tutorial, we'll discuss the Q push button widget inside PyQt6 and the various options, the various styles, the various CSS options, the various alignment options that we can apply on this widget to customize its appearance, add extra functionality, and overall make this widget a much more integral part of our GUI application, rather than just something that we just click on and you know it just triggers something. We can actually you know use the button for a lot more than just that. All right. So without further ado, let's begin. The Q push button widget is the class that we'll use to create this button. All right. So I'll go ahead and create a simple button over here and create it using the Q push button class. The first parameter that it takes is going to be the string, the string that you want to you know have display on the button, something like click me, okay, or something like submit, or if you're making a login page, it can be something like login, okay? So let's just leave it at click me for now, all right? And the second parameter is gonna be the parent, okay, the parent of this button, all right? So that's gonna be self, which refers to our window, okay, to our Q widget window here, okay? And yeah, so what I'll do is simply move this button somewhere in the middle of our screen using the move function, okay? This moves it to the 50th X position and the 50th Y coordinate, all right? That's basically what it does. So let's run this code and let's see what we get, all right? There we go. There's a simple button. It says click me and if I click on this button, it does nothing, okay? Why is that? Well, obviously we need to actually implement that functionality ourselves, all right? So let's see how we can do that. Now, this is actually a system called signals, okay? That's actually a concept in PyQt6. It's called signals and slots, okay? You trigger an event, for example, you click on a button. That's an event. It triggers a signal, like the trigger, such as the signal called clicked, okay? That's a signal, okay? And this then tr triggers or activates a slot, which is also known as a function, okay? So basically, let me just run, run through that again. Basically, an event occurs, such as you clicking a button, that triggers a signal, such as clicked. Clicked is the name of that signal when you click on the button. And then this signal is connected to a function, also known as a slot, that when this signal is detected, it's gonna run that function, okay? So using that thought process, what I'll do is use the connect function to connect this button to a function. Okay, let's just connect it to one of the many functions that's available in our window class. So let's just pick close, okay? So what this does here is connects this function to our clicked signal. And the clicked signal will generate whenever I click the button. So if I click this button, it's, it should actually call the self.close function on our window. And that should close our window. And yes, see, I clicked on that button and it closed the window. All right, now let's just try changing this up a bit. I'll create this uh, function called hello and this prints out hello world, okay? And I'm gonna go over here and pass in this function name, okay? Don't include the parentheses, okay? Because that makes it a function call, not a function name, all right? So yeah, I'll run this code now. And if I click on this button, we see hello world printed in the output down there. All right, see? So yeah, that's the very basic core concept behind the Q push button in PyQt6. All right, so what more can we do with this? Okay, I did promise that we have a lot more options, a lot more styles and you know different ways we can use the button, all right? This is just a very basic implementation that pretty much everyone knows, but people don't really know what else you can do with the button. So let's discuss that. So first of all, we have the signals over here. The button has three you know, basic signals, all right? First it's clicked, okay? 
and let me show you what clicked it does. All right, let me just run this again and just observe a bit carefully as to what clicked does. Observe when exactly hello world is printed out in the console down here. Okay, observe carefully. I'm gonna click on the button and I have it held down. All right, I'm holding it down. Currently, there is no output on the console. I'll let go of this and it prints out hello world. So from this, we can deduce that when we click and let go, that's when this signal is triggered. Okay, there are other, si there are other signals such as pressed. Pressed will trigger whenever we hold down the button, whenever the button is in a state of being held down. So if I click this button and hold it down, it prints out hello world. Now, it doesn't really matter if I let go or not. Okay, I just let, I just, you know, let, let, let it go. Uh, it doesn't really matter because it'll print out or it'll trigger the function that it's connected to whenever it's in that intermediate state of being held down. All right, then there's released. Okay, released is triggered only when you let go. So I'm gonna click this, I'm holding it down. Nothing's being, nothing's being printed out. Okay, I'll let go and there we go. It prints out hello world. Okay, released basically just triggers whenever you let go of the button. Just re remember that. These are the three main signals. All right, so what else can we do with buttons? Well, we can also, let's say we can, uh, let's take a look at some CSS styles. Okay, now I have a whole video on CSS styles. So if you wanna see, you know, how to use CSS in PYQT6 in a lot of detail, check that video out separately because there's a lot of content in there. And yeah, there's a lot to learn, but this is just a basic CSS overview for those of you, you know, who just wanna see what we can do with a button. Okay, what kind of CSS styles we can apply on a button in PYQT6. So let's take a look at that. I'm gonna create a multi-line string here and inside this function, I'm gonna begin writing CSS code. Okay, so I'm gonna write Q push button. Actually, wait, we don't need to do that. Uh, let's make this a bit simpler on ourselves and let's change the font size. All right, I'm gonna change the font size to 18 pixels and include the semicolon over there, all right? Basically, you write the CSS property, you write a colon, and then you write the value of that CSS property. All right, there are default values, okay, and we're just changing those default values over here. So I'll run this now, and there we go. You can see that the text is a lot bigger, okay? But that's not all we can do. We can also change the background color. So I could change the background color to, for example, let's, let's pick uh, green, all right? Actually not green, let's pick yellow. Okay, something light colored as the background. So if I click that, we now see that we have a yellow colored button. Not bad, it looks, it looks pr pretty nice, right? So what else can we do? We can also change the color of the text, okay? And we change that using color because background color refers to the background and color refers to the foreground color, which is the color of the text, okay? So I can change this to green, all right? And you'll see now that it's green. Okay, it's not very no noticeable right now. So let's change it to something like pink. And okay, that's not a good color scheme. Let's change that to purple. Coming up with a good color scheme is actually pretty important. You know, it's, it matters a lot, a lot. So if I do red, then yeah, that shows up nicely. All right. So that's what we can do. That, those are some basic CSS styles. There's a lot more that you can apply, borders, margins, and all that kind of stuff. Look up a good CSS tutorial I recommend and learn all of those CSS styles. Or don't, you don't need to learn them. Just you know, do it as you go along. You want to erase the borders, just Google it, find out the CSS property related to it, and then change its values. End of story. And you'll learn as you go along. But that's not all there is to the CSS styles that we can apply on the button. There's even more cool stuff that we can do, all right? And let me just try something new here. I've never actually done this before, so this is a bit new to me. Let me just 
try this out. Okay, and this should work. Yes, good. Okay, because because if I want to apply the hover effect, which I'm going to do right now, I need to use a, a different approach. All right. So what I'm going to do here is add in some hover effect. Okay. When I move my cursor over the button, I want to change it a bit. Okay. I want to make some special effect happen. All right. Because I don't think it looks very good right now. It's not interactive. I hover over it. it, it doesn't really change. I don't really know if I'm interacting with it or not. So I want to change something. So I'm just going to remove this code and within these curly brackets for the Q push button widget and only for when it's hovered. Uh, okay, let me just explain this again. This is for the Q push button widget. Okay, and this is for the Q push button widget when it's in a hover state. Okay. So this, whatever, whatever CSS we define in here won't be triggered until it's in a hover state. Okay. And once the hover state is off, it'll revert back to the original style. So let's do this, that whenever it's being hovered, it'll change to 18 pixels. Otherwise we'll just keep the norm, the normal pixel size at 16. Okay. We'll change the background color to red whenever it's being hovered over and we'll change the color of the text to yellow. All right, basically inverting the colors. So if I move my cursor over it, well, we can now see that the text has size has increased a bit. Okay, you can notice a slight pop in effect, actually a pop out effect, I think, and it looks better. Okay, it's interactive. You know that you're moving your mouse over it. All right, and of course it still works. Wait, did, did I remove the clicked in? Oh, I did. Uh, that's why it's not printing anything. But yeah, basically you understand the concept here, right? You can understand that how we're using CSS and how we're making it so, so creative, all right? And something more than just your regular button. Now, if you're good with CSS and if you spend the proper amount of time, you can make a whole team for your GUI application, all right? You need skill and practice to make uh, you know, to combine different CSS properties to make something that looks pretty good. All right. So it kind of depends on your creative design. Otherwise you can always look up, uh, other web, you know, you can just open up any web page and see how they style their buttons. You'll get some good, good reference from there. All right. So what else can we do with buttons? Let's just remove this code. All right. Just to keep things simple. So let me just show you some of the methods available here. I'm using VS code. So pretty much all of these are right here. Okay. You can see all of these over here. There's a just size. That's not very important. There's a, let's look at the set functions and these are pretty important. So, um, where is it? There's set cursor. You can change the cursor uh, when you move the mouse over it, you can change it to disabled. Okay. It basically makes the button uh, in a disabled state. Let me show you what that does. Uh, uh, hold on. I've never actually used this before. Um, change this to false, I believe. Okay, wait, no, that keeps it active. Uh, I guess I, I need to pass in true to this function. And yes, now it's a disabled. What else is there? Well, we can also change the size. Okay, we can adjust uh, size. And where is it? We can set the maximum size set the minimum size. Those are useful when you're using layouts with your widgets. All right. Layouts are a separate topic. We'll have a video on that separately, but this can control the button size and make sure it doesn't expand past a certain point or doesn't, you know, go down beyond a certain point. All right. And there's also supposed to be, um, some different ones set fixed, right? Yeah. These functions can be used to manually set the size. You can either do this function and just pass in like 200 and 100, all right, width and, width and height. First, the first value is the width, second value is the height. So if I do this, we'll end up with a button that's 200 pixels wide and 40 pixels long, um, sorry, uh, height, okay? So you can also change the height and width separately, although I don't see why you would want to if you have this function already. Okay. But that might come in handy. 
All right, so is there anything else I can really, that's really worth discussing? You can change the font. Also, you can also do this using CSS. Fonts are a bit of a different story. Uh, sometimes you may need to actually download the font that you want to use, all right? Maybe we'll make a separate video on that, all right? Uh, geometry is similar. You can use it to just change the size, okay? You can basically change the position and you know where it appears. The first two parameters are the X and Y location where the button appears, and the second parameter, uh, the third parameter is the width, and the fourth parameter is the height. Okay, so basically, if I removed this, this would actually give us the same output. Okay, because this also is like a built-in move function. Okay, let me just change that and show you what it does. Okay, uh, hold on, what's going, what's going on here? Ah, right, there we go. That was a, was a bit extreme, okay? Uh, but you, you get the point, right? It's basically controlling where it shows up. And just like this, there's so many different functions, so many different methods that we can use with buttons. Okay, if you're interested in learning more, look up the documentation, or if you have a good, good IDE, like VS Code, you can just sit here and scroll through these options yourself. And if you don't understand any of them, just Google them and you'll understand them. Most of them, of them you can actually just tell by the name, set disabled, set enabled, that makes sense, you know what that is. And yeah, pretty much. Okay, so yeah, pretty, pretty useful. And I think that's about it. Let's conclude the video here. And I hope you guys learned something new in this video today. I hope you guys found this interesting. If you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought. And I hope to see you guys in one of my later videos because we have a lot more videos on widgets coming out. This was the first video. And in the next, we'll discuss the queue label and the queue line edit and so on and so on. And some more niche widgets that are pretty interesting. You won't find tutorials on them. You know, you, you won't usually find stuff on them online. Uh, it's the kind of stuff that's just in the documentation. People don't really talk about it, but those are useful nonetheless. And I personally have found, found them to be pretty handy. All right. So yeah, let's end the video here and I'll see you guys in one of my later videos. Later.